Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at Loop Tools. It's a really handy add-on that helps you with editing your meshes and it comes with Blender, you just go to Edit, Preferences, select Add-ons, type in Loop and there is Loop Tools. These add-ons should be saved by default but you can go down to the bottom here and save current state in case you've got auto save unticked. So I can close that down and now I have the add-on installed. When I go into edit mode now, it should be down the side here under edit. Now originally it was under tools but it seems to be edit now and you can find the loop tools options just here. You can also right click and it will come up at the top loop tools. So what does it do? First of all I'm going to right click and subdivide this cube, so subdivide and I'll just turn it up to 10. Let's zoom in a bit and deselect all by double tapping A. My screencast keys are down the bottom left in case you get stuck. I'm going to select a square of vertices, so C to circle select, and I can use my wheel to change the size of this, and I'll just select this sort of square here. And now if I look at my loop tools, I've got this option called circle, and that turns it into a circle. This is really handy. Lots of you will have seen me use the two sphere tool, but this does a slightly better job. If I press three now and circle select and select these faces, I can then inset them, I can extrude them, and I can create some nice circular sticky outy bits whilst keeping my nice topology. That's my favorite tool, although there's some other great ones. I'm going to delete this cube and start with a plane this time and go into edit mode with tab, right click and subdivide once again, giving it 10 subdivisions. I'll go into vertex mode with one so you can see all the vertices. This time I'm going to select this edge along here. So I've alt left clicked to select a line of vertices and I'm just going to duplicate them. So shift D, duplicate and I've pulled them down here. Now if I select this group of vertices again with alt shift left click, so it's selected that line as well as this one, I can press bridge and that creates a bridge between the two. This is the same as bridge edge loops, but we have an option for segments, which is quite handy, so we can bring up the segments. We can actually twist as well, which doesn't work in this case, but I'll quickly show it with a circle. So I'll delete this, Shift A, circle, into edit mode, Shift D, to duplicate those edges, select all and bridge, and we've got this bridge again. It's remembered my settings, which is four segments, and this time we can twist and you can see this vertices is now going to the next one along and you can twist it around like this. So let's delete that and back to my plane, Shift A, Mesh Plane, into edit mode and right click to subdivide them 10 times. Let's go to the next one on the list which is curve. So if I select this line here and I'm going to turn it into a curve, I want this starting point here so I'll grab that out in the Y axis, G then Y, and I'll grab this one, G then Y, and I want a curve going between the two. Now if I select these two at the moment and press curve, it just creates a straight line. But if I select one of these middle vertices and press curve, you see it creates this lovely curve. You've also got options for most of these tools that it has an influence and you can change the amount that it influences. Another useful tool is flatten. So if I grab this one by the Z axis this time and then select this line and press flatten, it brings them all down but it averages them out, so if you have a look, it's got a slight slope up here because it took into account that one vertices was up here. So it averages it out and flattens them out. So if I deselect all and go to select and then select random and then grab these in the z-axis and then select everything again with A and flatten, you can see that it's flattened it out and taken the average height. It does have other options, so you can do it from view or normal, but you can have a play with those. Now another interesting option is the G stretch. If I go to grease pencil now and use the annotate, so hold it down and get annotate and let's draw a line like this. Now back to my selection tool here and select this edge once again. This time I'm going to press G stretch. It stretches it across to my grease pencil line. So on to the next one. This time I'm going to delete this and erase my line by going to the grease pencil annotate eraser and rubbing it out. Back to the selection and let's add in a circle. Into edit mode, let's duplicate that. Move it up here and rotate it slightly. G 
duplicate that, move it up here, rotate it slightly, and I'll scale it down this time. Duplicate that, rotate it slightly. This will all make sense eventually. Select all and press loft, and you can see it's created mesh between my objects. You can do this with lines as well. It's still got twist turned on, so I'll turn that back down to zero, and you'll see it has the straight lines. You can even loop it so it goes back to the beginning, but obviously there's not much of a loop here. So it's quite a clever tool, and this used to be an old style of modeling. If I start with a line this time, I'll grab this plane, delete these two vertices, and subdivide these two. You can see you can create complex shapes by duplicating this line, and I'll grab a few of these, move them around slightly to edit my shape. Select all and press loft. And you can see I've got a quite complex shape there and I start adding a subdivision surface modifier. And you can see if I shade smooth, you can create quite complex shapes fairly quickly and easily using the loft. So I'll remove that subdivision surface modifier. Now relax is an interesting one and I'm not quite sure what it's doing a lot of the time. But if I press relax now, it just creates quite a mess. But if I select a line and try and relax it, you can see it sort of averages out and evens it out trying to smooth it, which is a bit like smooth vertex, but it looks like it's trying to maintain the position. If I go to vertex, smooth vertices, you can see that sort of moves position, whereas relax tries to, I think, average them out and smooth them out without moving them around. So if I press relax again, it doesn't move positions very much. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not something I've found much of a use for yet. The last one is space. So I'm going to move this over to the other one and this one over to this one. And you'll get the idea of what I'm doing in a second. So if I select this line now and press space, it averages out the distance between them, which can be very useful. So here's before and here's after. And remember, you've got your influence here as well. So that's all the loop tools, a very handy add-on, which is well worth turning on within Blender. Remember you find it under the edit menu, you must be in edit mode, and you can right click and go to loop tools up here as well. So thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.